Developing a sharp safety program with five key steps. Improving staff safety has been a personal passion of mine for nearly two decades. During that time, I have learned just how many factors and personnel need to coalesce at the same time for real cultural change to be achieved. With this in mind, our team has put together this video on a five-step guide to implement a comprehensive, sharp safety program to prevent scalpel injuries. This has to be done with minimum disruption to the critical functioning of a busy operating room or theatre. Today's session covers an overview of international legislation and regulations, the hierarchy of controls, new audit tools to monitor the implementation of the safety program, some of the organisational issues that need to be considered, and last but not least, a refresher on the benefits of investing in sharp safety. Professional bodies and national governments have written policies, standards and legislations specific to healthcare institutions in many countries, including but not limited to Australia, USA, UK and Europe, underscoring the importance of protecting healthcare staff from injuries at work. On this slide you can see a summary of these key guidelines. One of the more recent updates is the revised Australian standard AS3825-2020. This revised standard stipulates that scalpel blades can only be removed using devices specifically designed for this function. I see this as a critical step in improving staff safety as now clinicians must be provided with safety devices specifically designed to reduce their risk of scalpel injury. Other countries still rely on generic legislation that covers worker safety in all industries. Together, these regulations and standards provide the framework to set up your SHARP safety program. I worked in the emergency department of a large tertiary referral hospital for the best part of 35 years. During that time, I had strong clinical and research interests in both staff safety and patient safety. However, it was only recently that I learned about the hierarchy of controls and its potential application to improving staff safety in healthcare. The hierarchy of controls dates back to 1950 when they were developed by the National Safety Council in America. They took an upside down approach to the behaviour based safety programs that ignored hazards and risks and focused on critical workers' behaviour. The old way of dealing with staff safety relied heavily on elaborate mechanisms to check, inspect, observe, coach, reward and even discipline workers. Does this ring a bell? Over the last 70 years, the hierarchy of controls has been standardised across most industries to reduce risk in a systems-wide manner. Healthcare is finally reviewing and adopting this proven approach. Use of the hierarchy of controls is now recommended by many globally respected institutions in healthcare including but not limited to the World Health Organization, the Center for Disease Control, and the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health in the US, Safe Work Australia, and Queensland Health, to name but a few. The hierarchy of controls is divided into five levels, elimination, substitution, engineering controls, administrative controls, and PPE. This provides you with a structured and simple way to analyse and manage any occupational risk. I'm going to highlight these different levels using the example of Sharp's injuries to illustrate how an organisation's staff safety can be optimised using these principles. Elimination is obviously the best way of reducing injuries when it is a possibility. By way of examples, non-essential intravenous and intramuscular injections need to be stopped. The medications need to be given as oral or transdermal formulations as soon as feasible. And for appropriate wounds, glue should be used in preference to sutures. Substitution is another excellent way of reducing injuries. Examples include the almost universal introduction of needle-free intravenous access systems and blunt tip suture needles for closing muscle and fascia in surgery. 
However, in many cases, elimination or substitution of a sharp is not physically possible, such as the need for scalpels to be used in surgery. In these cases, we need to look at the next levels in the hierarchy of controls to determine the best way to prevent these injuries. Starting with engineering controls. Engineering controls are devices specifically designed with a safety feature to protect the user from injury. An example would be a single-handed scalpel blade remover. By contrast, despite the frequent use of artery forceps to remove blades, artery forceps are not designed to perform this task and are not considered to be an engineering control. Other examples of engineering controls include retractable syringes and sharps disposal units that comply with relevant regulations and standards. Recent studies have shown that all safety devices used as engineering controls are not equal. According to these studies, safety devices can be categorised into the more effective passive or automatic safety devices and the less effective active or manual safety devices. So how can one distinguish between these two types of safety devices? The superior passive or automatic safety devices are defined as devices in which the safety feature is automatically activated without the need for extra action by the user. Examples include retractable syringes and single-handed scalpel blade removers. The less effective active or manual safety devices are those devices that require the user to manually activate the safety feature, leaving room for human error to negate the potential safety benefit. Examples include safety scalpels and syringes with an external barrel or sheath to cover the needle. A recent study by Tersini et al. showed that passive or automatic safety devices were involved in 70 times fewer injuries than the active or manually operated safety devices. Hence, it is really important that you look for passive safety devices as part of your safety program to prevent sharps injuries. The next step is administrative controls. Administrative controls are essentially there to ensure that staff actually enact the hierarchy of control solutions agreed upon. They include writing policies, including an exposure control plan, and ensuring staff are adequately trained in safe work practices and the use of engineering controls. The training can now be done online with videos and new interactive training apps. Implementation rates can be monitored with safety score audits of purchasing data. Personal protective equipment, or PPE, is probably the most universally identified way of keeping staff safe. However, it sits at the bottom of the upside down pyramid for a reason. It is the least effective way of protecting staff from injuries. Examples include double gloving, disposable gowns, and N95 face masks. PPE is almost the option of last resort. The first four levels need to be given greater importance and need to be implemented in conjunction with PPE, not replaced by PPE. Now that we have looked at the hierarchy of controls to identify how to manage sharps risks, let's look at how we can assess the effectiveness of your sharp safety program. Once the program has been designed with input from all the key players, the staff educated on the risk of scalpel cuts and injuries, and the correct use of the recommended passive safety devices, it is important to combine the actual implementation of the program with a reliable metric. We recommend using a sharp safety scorecard, which uses audits of purchasing data to measure the actual use of safety devices over time. In simple terms, if you aren't buying safety devices on an ongoing basis, no one is using them and your safety program is not being complied with. This tool identifies the weak links that would benefit from extra time listening to the staff's concerns and then more training on both the problems and the solutions. At the core of the organisational factors to be considered is the facility's safety culture. We have been advocating for staff safety culture to be promoted both in its own right and to improve patient safety outcomes. One tool to measure your staff's perceptions 
of their facilities culture of staff safety was produced by the CDC. It can be found in the developing Sharp Safety program on the ClickSmart digital platform. The link to the ClickSmart digital platform will be found on the video description. Investing in Sharp Safety has a large number of benefits to staff, to patients and to the employing institutions themselves. Like all good prevention programs, money is ultimately saved. To quote an old shipping magnate, if you think safety is expensive, try having an accident. I'm sure the owners of the Ever Given ship recently stuck in the Suez Canal are thinking exactly the same thing. The steps highlighted in this video will assist you with implementing an effective sharp safety program that will keep you and your colleagues safe by preventing such injuries. ClickSmart was founded in Australia in 1998. It all started with a nurse's cry saying, there has to be a better way. As she struggled to remove a scalpel blade from its handle with a pair of old artery forceps. That night, my colleague, Dr. Neville Henry, went home and began working on a project that would later become the world's first single-handed scalpel blade remover, the ClickSmart Blade Flask. Since then, ClickSmart has continued to advocate for staff safety and has helped healthcare professionals safely remove over 100 million scalpel blades worldwide with the blade flask. For further information on the five-step implementation guide and for assistance with the evaluation, training, education, implementation and assessment of sharp safety devices, visit ClickSmart's digital platform on the ClickSmart website. Here you will find free tools that can assist with each stage of the facility's implementation process. We at ClickSmart are committed to providing quality safety devices. If you have any questions about the five-step implementation guide or ClickSmart safety devices, contact our team at hello at clicksmart.com. Thank you for joining us today.